Hello Scorpio and welcome to my channel Tarot by Gabrielle. This is going to be a general reading for Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus signs looking at your connection to the person that you are dealing with and needing to learn the most from right now. We're looking at all three sides of the connection so we've got your energy toward it, their energy toward it and the energy in between it. The concept being that there are three sides to every story. So we've got your version of the truth, their version of the truth and this higher level unbiased truth in the middle. This middle section is looking at what is the deeper purpose of the connection and the best way for you to move forward in order to align further with your higher self. As I do in all of my readings, I have pulled the overall energy and clarified those messages as well as the overall theme for the reading, which we'll jump into in just a second. But I still have the tarot deck uh, for each side of the connection that I'll be pulling from, um, as well as the advice deck I'll be using to close out the reading in the extended. Any information on the extended reading or on booking a personal reading with me is in the description box below. Last thing, please remember that these are general readings. They are not here to resonate fully for everyone and they won't resonate fully for everyone. So do please remember to take what does resonate and helps your personal situation and leave what does not. On that note, the whole reading can be reversed. If that is the case for you, that's totally fine and totally normal. Again, the point is to take what helps and leave what doesn't. All right, let's jump on in, Scorpio. On your side of the connection, you have passion with the nine of pentacles. So there is a lot of desire coming from your side of this connection towards this person. I feel like you guys have um, very strong chemistry. There's probably a really intense attraction here. And I feel like that wants that that leads you to wanting, you know, to see what this connection has to provide you or um, that keeps you coming back to the connection in a way. Um, but it's interesting because then this person has solitude with the Knight of Swords. The solitude energy is kind of this energy of withdrawal. Um, the Knight of Swords energy is this energy of kind of running away, um, running away from anything a little bit more, um, you know, like intimacy can go, there's so many different forms of it. But when you talk about emotional intimacy or, um, you know, the vulnerability that is required with that, someone who might be good at intimacy in some other ways might not have that capacity to provide intimacy in the ways that you are needing. And I feel like you're lacking um Either it's like emotional connection or like commitment in some way from this person, but you're not lacking in other ways. And I feel like that draw kind of brings you, you know, toward this person. But then this person, when it comes to like maybe things getting serious or they're getting to kind of like the conversation of deeper commitment, it's almost as if this person withdraws, um, which kind of keeps you stuck in this cycle of not having, you know, what it is that you ultimately desire in this connection outside of just the, um, the attraction and the, the kind of, the, the exciting stuff, I guess is a good way of saying that. Um, yes, obviously physical intimacy, but there can be other, you know, other ways that it's exciting as well. Now, in between the connection, you have growth with the seven of pentacles in reverse. Spirit is asking you, and this has been such a, uh, a theme, this round of readings, but just being really picky and really discerning with where you are investing your energy, especially when it comes to this person. There's this energy of like making sure that you are protecting yourself because when we do have strong um, connections to people, um, and when we do, you know, feel that they have those connections to us, but yet they don't show up for it or they withdraw from it or whatever the case is, it can be really frustrating. And so we might continue to come back to the connection and come back to the person, hoping that things will be different or hoping that they'll change. But then we end up on the side of not having um, what it is that we, we truly desire, which might be commitment and unconditional love and the things that you are absolutely deserving of. Overall theme of the reading is free yourself. So Spirit is asking you to free yourself from some sort of cycle that I feel like you've been stuck in with this person. So let's see, Scorpio. Oh, there you are on the bottom of the deck. Queen of Cups, whether you're male or female. Let's see, Scorpio's energy toward the person they are dealing with. King of Swords, you could be dealing with an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, but this King of Swords has been coming out a lot in readings this week. And again, this is this energy of discernment. Um, 
because here's the fool in reverse. You're wanting some sort of a, a new beginning in this connection, but then there's the chariot in reverse, and it feels like no matter how hard you try, it just feels like you can't move past a, a certain point, whether it's like there's physical... Uh, you have a physical connection to this per person, but you're wanting that commitment or you're wanting, you know, to take that next step in a relationship or whatever the case is. It just feels like you can't reach that point that you're looking for in this connection, even though it's obvious that there is a connection there. And with this King of Swords energy, it's almost about, and I already kind of said this, but it, it is, it's this energy of discernment of going into a situation with both eyes wide open, with being picky about your energy, because you wanting more is what you deserve. I think a lot of times people start to second guess like, oh, am I asking for too much? Or, you know, for me, like in relationships in the past, I'd always kind of play the cool girl. I'd be like, oh, I'm fine with no commitment or I'm fine with this or that or whatever the case was, even though that wasn't true, like on a deeper level, I did desire that. I just didn't think that I could have it. And I almost looked at my needs or my desires as like a burden, almost as if, you know, wanting commitment or wanting um, like a deeper connection with something that I should be ashamed of in a way. And I think sometimes we need to remember that what we desire in love, like whatever that looks like for you is absolutely what you deserve. And you should not apologize for that or feel as if that makes you less attractive or, um, maybe it will to the wrong people, but to the right people, you know, they will be there to, to meet those needs for you. All right, Scorpio side of the connection. So you're wanting a new beginning in this connection. There's a lot of desire here. Scorpio's energy toward this person. King of Pentacles in reverse, Five of Swords. Could be dealing with an Earth sign. Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus, you don't have to be. But there's this Five of Swords here. You, you have your guard up with this person. You want to let it down. You want to feel safe. There's no emotional safety. That's what it is. There's no emotional safety here. It's like with the King of Pentacles in reverse, I feel like this person checks all of your boxes in like a, a material sense. Like maybe they, you know, I don't know, whatever that may be, you're, you know, they are attractive in the way that you're looking for, or they make good money, or they come from a good family, or like, you know, they check the boxes, right? But there's no emotional safety. It feels like you are always on guard. You're always wondering what they're going to do, or how they're going to act, or how you're going to feel because of what they do or how they act. And I feel like that has left you feeling um, maybe a little bit... I don't know like if defensive is the right word, but just like, I mean, I feel like you're frustrated. I feel like you're frustrated in this connection because you're desiring way more than what's being presented. And, you know, when, when someone's there for like the fun stuff, but not there when things get real and things get serious, it can start to make us second guess our worth. If there's anything that I've learned, it's that, a connection without emotional safety is not a relationship. It's an attachment. And anytime we lack emotional safety in a connection, there's something going on there. There's something that needs to be addressed because emotional safety and the ability to be able to speak up about your needs and to feel heard and to feel reciprocated in effort, like all of those things are absolutely necessary to build a healthy, sustainable relationship, to have what it is that you are ultimately looking for. Um, so, but I feel like you're really lacking that, which is why you have free yourself. It's almost like there's an addiction here, an addiction to this person, an addiction to the really, really good feelings when they're there, right? Especially like, like, I feel like there's this energy of you could share these really wonderful, beautiful moments with each other. And then like the next, the next day, this person's like nowhere to be found. And you're like, wait, what did that mean anything at all? And I feel like that leaves you wondering, am I just being used? Am I just, you know, being taken advantage of? And I, and I don't think you are. Like, I don't think it's that black and white. I feel like there's probably a lot more to it than that. But I do feel at the end of the day that your, your heart isn't being taken care of here. Your, your soul isn't being taken care of. Um, and that's really important because it, you know, you deserve to be taken care of, um, on all the levels. All right. Scorpio side of this connection. 
the Knight of Wands. Yeah, okay, hang on. Let me clarify this. I feel like there's kind of this energy of like, well, I'll take what I can get from them because I do feel like you, um, with the Knight of Wands, like there's this energy of really putting yourself out there, really doing what you can to make this work or to, um, you know, pour into this connection. I don't feel like you want to lose the connection. And this is why I feel like the issue comes is like, you like what you have with this person. You just want more. So you don't want to lose what you have, but you also know that you're not just happy with where things are at, like you desire more. And that puts you in a really tricky position, right? Because you're like, well, what if I set a boundary and I ask for more and I lose what we have? Um, or what if I, um, you know, what if, if I do walk away from this connection or choose myself or whatever, what if I miss out on the possibility of what this could be? Like I don't, you know, I want to, I want to make sure that I'm, you, you, I feel like you want to make sure that you're doing what you can to just know that you did all you can, I guess is a good way of putting that. Um, and I get that. I absolutely do. But I feel like there's more to this story because I feel like you've been stuck in this cycle of accepting less than what you need in this connection because of what you're getting. Like you do value what, what this connection brings. It's just that you want more and you shouldn't feel, you shouldn't feel bad or wrong for wanting more here, especially if we're talking about commitment or um, reciprocation or support or love or whatever the case is, like you're deserving of all those things. But let's see, what the heck is going on with this person? This person's energy toward Scorpio. You know what I've never noticed? I have never noticed that this is a unicorn. This is a unicorn in this picture here. And I feel like you feel you found a unicorn. That's what it is. You're like, but I found, like I will never find someone like them again. I feel like that's part of the energy. I'll never find. So you're like, I'm okay with what I'll get. But then you have free yourself because it's almost like you've been on this, like I think merry-go-round with this, right? It's like you've been on this merry-go-round with this person just going around and around and around and around and just never getting, there's no progress, there's no, and, and I think that that's why you have free yourself is it's like you got to get off this merry-go-round because this is starting to harm you like emotionally. But I do, I feel, I feel like you, it's like, but I'll never find someone like them again. Like it'll never be as good as it could be. And that keeps you really, it, it keeps you coming back or it keeps you investing or it keeps you, yeah, it keeps you um, drawn to this. And I think that that's understandable and natural, but I also think that it's important for you to know that, first of all, what is meant for you will never, ever pass you. And sometimes when we get so stuck on making something work, we might actually be blocking ourselves from something that's even better. Um, maybe that provides us with those feelings of passion, but also has the emotional safety, you know, like, cause you deserve both. You don't have to choose. You don't have to choose. Um, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot, a lot here. Okay. This person's energy towards Scorpio. Solitude with the Knight of Swords. What is going on with this person's energy? Cause I mean, we obviously, you're obviously dealing with a runner, someone who is, who's afraid to afraid to commit, afraid to invest on a deeper level, doesn't really want to face those parts of themselves. See, that's the hard part, the Ace of Wands. Like, again, I get passion. Like, I feel like that passion is very reciprocated. And that's what keeps you both in this cycle because I feel like, because there's the world, so the, there is a lot of passion. There's a, there's a lot of connection here. And I feel like both people know that. King of Cups in reverse with the Page of Wands. Ooh, I don't like that. I get childish. Childish energy from this. Because the King of Cups in reverse can be this energy of like, like gaslighting or, or uh, kind of playing with emotions. Because I don't, I don't feel like this person wants to lose. Here's where we're at. I don't feel like this person wants to lose what you have either, but they don't want to invest more. You don't want to lose what you have, but you can't keep accepting less. So it's kind of like you're at this, 
this, um, I don't want to say crossroads necessarily, but it's like, well, where do we go from here? Now, I think it's important because you're like, well, why won't this person want, why don't they want to invest more? Why am I not good enough? Why am I only worth, you know, this to them? Why am I, it doesn't have anything to do with you because I feel like this person, it, the reason that they don't want to commit to you isn't because it's it's you, it's because they don't want to commit to anybody. They're probably afraid of that commitment, of the, the that deeper connection of someone seeing them for who they are, that vulnerability, all the things that come when you're dealing with someone who is a runner and struggling with that emotional unavailability and I think that we have a hard time because we forget that, I mean, you hear it in spirituality all the time, right? The way that people treat you is not a reflection of how they feel about you, but more a reflection of how they feel about themselves, which is why we can't take the things that people do or people's capacity to love personally, because that is all about them. That has nothing to do with us, but that doesn't make it easy, right? Because it is a personal relationship. It feels very personal, especially in those moments where I feel like it's very promising or you see, you know, maybe the more intimate side of this person but then I feel like at the end of the day the consistent behavior that you see is the withdrawal and it almost feels like it always happens after things get deeper and that's because it probably spooks that person they're like this is too deep I don't know how to deal with this these feelings are uncomfortable instead of dealing with the fact that I don't know how to handle my own emotions I'm going to withdraw completely because it's easier now, remember, 95% of the way that we um, interact with our reality, 95% of our movements, choices, and decisions stem from our subconscious patterns, our subconscious behaviors. So I'm not sitting here saying this person is, is thinking, oh, this is uncomfortable and I don't know how to deal with my emotions, so I'm just going to withdraw. I feel like they don't know how to handle any of it. So they shut down. They push it away. They're like, that's just too much. It's too messy. I can't, I can't handle it. When in reality, all you're wanting is commitment or all you're wanting is a deeper connection. Um, but a deeper connection with another human being requires a deeper connection with oneself. And if someone hasn't connected with their themselves on an emotional level, they can't connect with you on an emotional level. If someone doesn't know themselves, because people can only meet you where they've met themselves, right? And it feels as if this person has not met themselves where you wish to be met, which doesn't mean that they don't value you. It means that they don't match the capacity of what you desire which isn't a reflection of you, but a reflection of them. So, and I talk about that a lot, right? Not taking other people's capacities to love personally, but it can be hard when you know somebody has feelings for you because you're like, I don't get it. Like, they have feelings for me, I have feelings for them. Like, it shouldn't be that hard um, for you, right? Because you're at a different level when it comes to maybe emotional maturity or it comes to um, emotional awareness or your ability to... Um, regulate, process, and handle your emotional experience. Like other people just don't have that capacity. In fact, that's kind of where you get into the conversation of like the toxic masculine, right? The toxic masculinity energy, which ex can exist in anyone, whether you're male or female. We all have, you know, female and, and masculine energies within us. But when you kind of deal with the, the toxic masculinity, it's, it's this masculine energy that doesn't know how to um, balance the feminine energy. And so it se seeks control. It seeks, um, you know, ways to remain distant from that feminine energy, from that emotional um, connection to both oneself and to another human being. So there's a lot going on here that literally has nothing to do with you. Um, but that's why I feel like this is why you are going to have to make the decision to get off this merry-go-round with this person because you can't control what they do. This person's energy towards Scorpio. Oh, there's a, okay, Hermit Norris. There's the King of Pentacles again, Earth sign energy. Um, there's that withdrawal. There's that emotional unavailability. There was, it, it's almost as if when things get to a certain point and there maybe even like you say hey I need a little bit more I desire a little bit more it's like instead of meeting you with a conversation or with empathy or with listening it's almost as if they completely meet you with withdrawal um, I mean this is definitely like this is definitely emotional unavailability at its finest and you know I think that I look back at connections that I was in with emotionally unavailable people and I think about how frustrating it was to see what someone was doing and not get them to see those things in themselves um because you're like if you would just if you would just stop pushing me away like this could be so good right 
Um, but the thing is, is this, you're, when you're dealing with someone who's emotionally unavailable, you are dealing with someone who's afraid to face their own stuff. Emotional unavailability is a result of shutting down because you don't know how to properly handle your emotional experience. And that is someone who needs to go to therapy and to work through their stuff, right? That's not something that you can control. I'm not saying they're a bad person. I don't really even gather that. Um, emotional unavailability often gets confused with narcissism. I think that narcissists can hold emotional unavailable qu qualities, but um, I'm not here to diagnose anybody, okay? But just understand when you're dealing with someone who's emotionally unavailable, you're dealing with someone who is deeply hurt and hasn't dealt with any of that and therefore is running from it in the form of running from it from you. Because, you know, a deeper connection with another person, like I said, is going to require a deeper connection with oneself, but this person doesn't want to face what's going on with it which is the whole problem, which is why they withdraw um, when things get hard or when things get deep. This person's energy towards Scorpio. What does Scorpio need to know about this person's energy toward them? There's desire on both sides. I'm not, and I think that that's what makes it hard is you know that, you know, this person has desire, but it's like, I, and I've used this analogy in readings in the past, but when you're dealing with someone who has a desire, but hasn't done the work to be able to show up for a healthy relationship, it's the same thing as someone who like wants to run a marathon, but hasn't done any training. Like they're going to show up on marathon day, having not done any training, no matter how good of shape they're in and they're going to fail right? They're not going to make it to the end. It's not going to work because you can't just do that. Um, and so I feel like that's, it's, it's almost like, sure, this person has this desire. The desire is there, but the emotional intelligence isn't there. The emotional capacity to give and receive love in a healthy manner isn't there. The self-awareness isn't there. The, um, you know, knowing how to handle conflict and to communicate and to be vulnerable instead of running when things go, none of that is there. The tools aren't there. The capability to be able to give and receive in a healthy way isn't there. Okay. And I think that that's, where you're needing to look at this from a different perspective is understanding that you deserve someone who doesn't just desire you because of course people are going to desire you. You are lovable. You are deserving of that love. That's, that's the bare minimum. Someone desiring you and wanting to be with you is the bare minimum. Someone willing to do the work and to show up not just for the connection but for themselves in a way that makes it capable for them to show up for, for the connection, that is what you deserve. And that is what you need when it comes to what you're looking for. So, when you're dealing with somebody who doesn't know how to love you well or treat you right, you're dealing with someone who doesn't know how to love themselves well or treat themselves right, which means there is nothing that you can do to make somebody who is in that state treat you well because you cannot force somebody to change their relationship with themselves. That has to be something that they choose to do um, on their own time and in their own way. And maybe they will, but maybe they won't, right? So best thing we can do is take people as they are. Other people will show us their capacity. Other people will show us what they're capable of. And that's why I feel Spirit is asking you to be very discerning with what you are committing to and what you are pouring into. You have to only water people who water you, to pour into people who pour into you. Otherwise, you are going to wake up one day and you are going to realize you have nothing left to give because you've given it all away to people who, who aren't you know doing the same for you. But on the flip side of that, it's understanding that it's not ever been about you. It's not about about your value. It's not about the fact that you are undeserving or that you're not lovable or that you aren't capable of what it is that you desire. It's that there's this energy of looking for love in people or in specifically this person who quite literally is incapable of giving it to you. And that's not to say you should feel you know bad for them or making excuses for their behavior. It's just helping give you this perspective on if somebody isn't changing the, when we're getting frustrated at that person for not changing, there's an aspect of us that we are not changing. There's something that we are needing to change um, to, to change our approach essentially. And I feel like I'm not saying like screw this connection, but I do feel like boundaries need to be set. I feel like there's this need of making sure that, you know, you're not just opening your heart, mind and soul and body to somebody who isn't taking care of it. Right. Cause that's what you deserve. You deserve someone who um, cause you, you're willing to take care of the connection, right? You deserve someone who's just as willing to take care of the connection. 
Okay, I'm gonna hop on over to the extended. You have growth with the seven of pentacles in reverse. I'm gonna dive deeper into these messages, looking at the deeper purpose of the connection and the best way for you to move forward in order to align further with your higher self. Thank you so much, Scorpio, as always, for your support of my channel. I obviously hope that this reading helped and resonated with you in a way that you were needing today. And as always, I wish you nothing but love and healing and all of the wonderful things that you deserve and desire on your journey moving forward. All right, bye, Scorpio.